I'm on a 6,000 mile road trip exploring the Pacific coast with the goal of knocking out as many new species as possible from my kayak. And I'm catching fish like this. <laughs> yeah, I got color. Yeah! So come along as I fish both freshwater and salt and meet new kayak anglers along the way. What? This is Field Trips with Robert Field. Look at that! That was insane! Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of the Field Trips vlog. So first off, I would like to thank each and every one of you that's watched the first two episodes and that has commented. Uh, like I said in the first one, I really do not know what I'm doing. I'm totally new with this whole vlog thing, so kind of bear with me as I kind of figure it out. Uh, the first two were pretty slow. I was just kind of driving, kind of documented the start of my journey, this, this month-long road trip along the West Coast. So after those two, the action really started to pick up with the first fishing episode, which aired two days ago. Like I mentioned in the first episode of the Field Trips vlog, I really want you guys to dictate what content I'm putting in this series. So I don't want to sit here and guess what you guys want to see. I want you to tell me what you're curious about, what questions you have, and what I can address for you. So in the first episode, I had four people comment asking me for the same thing. They asked for a rundown of my kayak trailer and the three kayaks that I brought on this trip. So thanks to the Natty 293, Ryan Bartimus, Brave Outdoors, and Edward Perry for asking for this one. So let's give you a kind of rundown of the trailer that I run on most of my trips and the three kayaks I chose to bring on this trip specifically. So right here behind me, you can see this is the Boondocks kayak fishing trailer. It's made right here in the USA. It's all aluminum, so you never have to worry about rusting. It's also super light, so you can pull it with just about any vehicle. It's got two eight foot lock boxes on it, and that's really what turned me on to this trailer in particular. Being able to put my rods in these lock boxes, keep them safe, keep them out of the way, keep them locked up and out of my truck is money on any road trip, no matter how long or short it is. The bottom of the trailer is also pre-drilled to accept a 4x8 piece of plywood or sheet metal. If you wanted to do that, you could make that gear storage down there. I've also fit a variety of kayaks down there, including a Hobie Pro Angler. So uh, even bigger kayaks can fit on the bottom level and you can easily get two kayaks on the top level. And they probably don't want me to tell you this, this is certainly not uh, manufacturer recommended, but I've actually carried up to five kayaks on this exact trailer, at least for short trips. Uh, you know, if you got enough straps, you can make anything happen. <laughs> This thing rides super smoothly, and what I really love about this is because of those lock boxes, even if you don't have any kayaks on it, it's still not gonna get real bouncy on the road. Some of these really lightweight aluminum kayak trailers, when you don't have kayaks on them, because there's no weight back there, they tend to bounce and kind of you know be all over the place behind you on the highways. So I've already put over 30,000 miles on this trailer, and this was just one of the hand-built prototypes. So uh, really has held up well, really no worse for the wear, despite going through most of the country so far. Oh my gosh, it's hot out here. I've been here for about three minutes. I'm already sweating. So now let's talk about the kayaks that I chose to bring on this month long road trip. A lot of people ask me, why did I bring more than one kayak? I'm a big believer that no kayak is perfect for every situation. No manufacturer makes a kayak that excels everywhere. And as a disclaimer, I have no affiliation with any kayak company. So a lot of people ask me who my kayak sponsor is. I do not have one. And some of them have asked me to join their teams and go exclusive with them. But I decided that for me personally, with what I'm trying to do in this sport and what I'm trying to do in life, it was really important to be able to use any kayak that I want, not have pressure to use a kayak that's not fit for the situation that I'm in. And because I do so many different types of fishing and so many different kinds of bodies of water, it really is impossible to find a kayak that works for me everywhere. So. On this trip in particular, I knew I was going to be fishing offshore, I knew I was going to be fishing in some fast moving rivers, hitting a couple lakes, and so because of that, I really needed some versatility in my kayak options. So the first one, and this is probably the kayak that I'm in the most, I think it's one of the most versatile options in the sport of kayak fishing, and that's going to be the Hobie Outback. So a lot of people ask me why I have an Outback and not a Pro Angler. Again, for me in particular, versatility is what I'm looking for. And where the pro angler, if I'm in super shallow water, there's a bunch of grass and I can't pedal it very effectively, the Outback is actually not too bad to paddle. Now, the hole is not really designed to be paddled, it's meant to be pedaled with their Mirage Drive, but it's not too bad to paddle, especially if you can keep the rudder down. So that gives me some options where I can keep it hands free when I need to, and in situations where a pedal drive is not ideal, I can go ahead and grab my accent paddle and paddle this thing around. This kayak is just super stable. I can stand up and fish all day very comfortably. It handles big water very well, so if I'm offshore, this is one of my go-to kayaks. It's 
It's got a really comfortable seat on the 2016 and beyond models. Uh, it's got a high low position. It's got plenty of in-hole storage and it's also light enough for me to carry around if I need to, even without a cart. So just a really versatile and flexible platform that I can use on just about any body of water. You saw me in this boat in the first fishing episode and you'll actually see me in it in the next three in a row. So next up, I brought the New Canoe Pursuit. Now this is a much different platform than the Hobie Outback. This is a paddle kayak, but it does have some similarities. This is probably the most stable platform that I own. Uh, this thing, it's extremely stable. I can kind of walk around the deck. It's got a really clean deck, so I don't have to worry about snagging line on, on anything in the boat. Perfect for fly fishing if you're wanting to stand up all day, be able to strip line without it getting tangled around a bunch of stuff. I thought I was gonna be doing some fly fishing for rainbow trout. So that's the main reason that I brought this boat. I ended up doing it conventionally, but I did use this boat up in Lodi. You'll see later in the season, went after some bass and striper. This is a perfect boat for rivers, lakes. Uh, I probably would not take this offshore. I don't think that's really where this boat excels, but it's really sweet, super comfortable to fish out of. It's got a 360 degree swivel seat, uh, swivels all the way around. So if you're kind of drifting in the wind or drifting in the current, you can kind of just not even worry about your boat position, use that seat to turn around and cast in a bunch of different directions. It's really slick in that way. You can look on my channel under the field tested, field approved playlist and find a full on the water video review of the new canoe pursuit. And last but certainly not least, I brought the Viking Kayaks Pro Fish Reload. Now this company is out of New Zealand. Uh, they're kind of, you know, relatively new to the United States, so some people still haven't heard of them. These are basically modeled after a sea kayak, a touring kayak, but modified for fishing. So in New Zealand, there's not a ton of fishing inland. It's mostly offshore, and that's definitely where the Viking roots come from, is offshore beyond the breakers. I tell everyone that if you want to paddle a boat offshore, I really believe that there is no better platform than the Viking Kayaks Pro Fish Reload. It's extremely fast, one of the fastest kayaks I've ever paddled. It gets up to speed quickly, so if you have to stop to let out a bait or anything like that, you can get right back up and get going right away. It also glides really nice, so even when you stop paddling to check your bait or anything like that, you'll keep moving. It's got surprising stability for how fast it is. I think it's got one of the best ratios of speed to stability in a paddle kayak. Just extremely stable for how fast it is. It also handles big water beautifully. It handles going through the surf really nice. Uh, I see the guys out in New Zealand surfing just for fun on this thing all the time. Uh, they get much bigger surf than I've ever actually paddled through. So uh, if it works out there, it's definitely gonna work for you. So if you're looking for a paddling kayak for offshore or just for covering long distances, I really don't think you can do much better than the Vikings Pro Fish Reload. So I brought this in case I was gonna be offshore in areas where the kelp was too thick to use my pedal drive. I also used it on a big lake where I knew we were gonna be covering a ton of water up in Idaho. You can still stand up in this thing. Uh, it's not really what it's designed for. Offshore, there's not too many times you need to stand up, but I have stood up and fished out of it. It's stable enough to do that. So um, if that's something you're gonna be just doing a little bit, it's a great kayak to use anytime you need to cover some water with a paddle. It's also got really killer features and accessories for fishing. They've got kind of a pod system. They've got the tackle pod, which you can put your transducer in, uh, your fish finder on top, your battery and tackle inside. And then when you get off the water, you take that whole thing out. It makes it super simple, super clean when you get off the water. They also have the chill pod, which goes in the back. It's kind of an integrated cooler, hard cooler that really fits nicely and kind of meshes with the hull. Uh, just tons of accessories, tons of fishability, and tons of performance out of this Viking. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this vlog episode. Kind of a quick and dirty rundown of my kayak setup and trailer setup here on the West Coast. People ask me all the time. I get tons of comments saying, Rob, I want to get a fishing kayak. What should I get? And unfortunately, it's really just not that simple. Uh, like I said a minute ago, there is no kayak that's perfect for every situation. There is no kayak that's perfect for every fishing style. So if you'd like to know if you're in the market for a fishing kayak, I need some more information from you. Comment below with your budget, the types of water you're fishing, the types of species you're going after, how big you are and what your kind of experience level is. And I'll do my best to recommend a few models and a few manufacturers that should work pretty well for you. So guys, I cannot tell you how much it means to me, all the support and nice comments you guys have made on the first few vlog episodes. Uh, I was really self-conscious starting this. I really don't know what I'm doing. So comment below if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, uh, if you wanna see something specific on a vlog, I answer every single question. And if you ask me to do a vlog on something that I end up doing, I'll shout you out in the video. 
So the next fishing episode is going to air on Tuesday and I'm heading to La Jolla, a legendary fishery near San Diego. I'm meeting up with Kevin Nakata from Hobie and we're going to be going offshore for California yellowtail. These fish are some of the strongest fighting fish I've ever gone after. It's going to get good. I'll see you guys in the next video.